Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 and I have another exciting episode of Teardown Tube. As you can see, this is my old second gen iPod mini. It's a 4 gig model, but um, as I will show you in a little bit, um, uh, autofocus, there we go. Yeah, as I'll show you in a little bit, I have actually modded this. I, I've removed the original 4 gig micro drive because that was what was broken and replaced it with a 16 gigabyte compact flash card. So this is solid state, much lighter. I get a little bit better battery life. But anywho, uh, you can see it turns on. It's all fully operational. Let me go and show you how to open this guy up and show you what I did. So first off, put on the lock switch. Now, I've removed these pads, so the idea is to get a pry tool in between the plastic and the metal and to pull up there's adhesive holding um, the top and the bottom on um, I've replaced mine so it'll actually be much more difficult for a fresh new iPod but uh, there we go this is always a little bit nerve-wracking doing and you'll want to be careful because, oh, come on, um, you'll want to be careful because uh, you don't want the whole switch. It shouldn't fall out or anything like that. It just um, hooks up in that uh, with that little micro switch in there. But uh, yeah, once you have this guy out, I uh, just put some adhesive double-sided tape in there to re-hold it back in. Um, then, easiest way, I say just go in one go, pull out the dock connector as well. Careful not to break these little fingers that are, um, sticking up here. And, uh, these two clips are the actual guys that hold it onto this. Okay, this is going to be the fun part. Um... I guess for starters, let's do the slightly easier part. Two screws on the top. Uh, Phillips, very small size, so make sure you do not lose them and or strip them. He says as he almost drops it off the table. <laughs> yeah, I love taking apart iPods. The older ones are a lot more interesting. The newer ones, they're just all adhesive and clips and you can never get it back together the way it was. Not easily. So, set those screws uh, safely aside. And now is the very fun part. I bent a paper clip out like this so that I could um, pry this uh, little clip in here. Uh, start on this side because you can see there the uh, ribbon cable is right there for the, um, the click wheel so I always start on this side and pull it out just enough to disable this clip here I've done this so many times that it, it was much easier now it took me like half an hour the first time I did it and set this clip aside now before you do anything um, we're going to want to uh, pull out the uh, click wheel connector here very carefully. I usually wiggle it back and forth slightly because this is pretty fragile. And you do not want to break this cable because you'll need to buy a new click wheel. And after a few times, it comes right out. And there you go. You can see why it can break so easily. <laughs> and so now, um, you remove the screws on the top. Now you can very carefully push the dock connector. I usually like to use the bottom of this tool. And you can very carefully slide it out until you can grab it by its sides. And pull out that way. Now the click wheel to take it out. You have to push in the entire wheel while sliding it out in order to, to uh, not scratch anything. And I guess 
because I'm such a cool guy. I'll show you how to take apart the click wheel too. There's four screws, one in each corner. They're just uh, short little screws. Interesting, this is the second gen one, which has the improved battery life and um, brighter colors, as well as um, it has either four or six gigabytes of memory. Um, interestingly enough, the click wheel color matches the body color. So you can see this is blue, which is pretty cool, I think. And so uh, there's a little tab here, careful not to break it. That's what holds the click wheel into the body. Um, it sort of clicks into place. There's a little flex cable here. Once again, carefully remove that. And you can see all it is, the cable assembly, is just the button and then the, um, the Molex connector, which just snaps into the place here. Now, when you click on any of the uh, directions, you'll see a little micro switch there, a little tech switch, which actually is the clicky part, which is pretty neat. And you'll notice the uh, touch motion. I, I believe this is a synaptics. Um, touch motion sensor. If I were to lift the plastic um, outer ring, then you'd see a sort of lightning pattern going radially outward all over the surface, and that's how it senses where your finger is. This is a capacitive touch sensor. So, so let me get this back together because, well, I'm going to need it back together quickly. If, as you can tell, um, I'm at a new no location. I'm no longer at home. Um, I'm up at college now, so I will be busy, unfortunately, um, but I'll be hoping to get some videos done. And uh, my roommate is into the same stuff I'm into, so I can have him help. Come on. Yeah, don't over tighten these screws. You don't need it severely tight, just enough to hold the uh, click wheel in place. I thought that was a pretty cool um, invention. I have a third gen iPod which has the buttons underneath the screen. And this way, uh, make sure you pop the uh, connector in on the bottom there, by the way. But this way, um, they integrate the four buttons along with the scroll wheel, which is is um, pretty you know ergonomical and pretty effective, uh, efficient use of space for something so small. Now to put it back in, you're gonna have to line it up. There's some rails along the side, on the inside, and do the opposite. Push it in while sliding it, and then you should hear it click as that little tab goes into place. And as you can see, manage not to scratch it up at least too much. <laughs> Uh, there's a clear little plastic window that goes into um, the anodized aluminum casing which actually just pops off as adhesive if you ever need to replace it and interestingly enough you can see here it's marked with a code but in addition there's this little exposed area here which actually there's a little metal clip that grounds to that which I always thought was kind of pretty cool actually that they did that um, in order to, to ground the case and here you can see I replaced the battery. Uh, I believe, yeah, I, I stuck some double-sided tape on there. I'm going to have to remove it. Ah. And most importantly, a Transcend Compact Flash 133x16 uh, gigabyte card, giving this four times the memory of, uh, of it originally, which is pretty cool. And so you can see everything. everything is tiny on this. I mean, the entire main board is really nothing uh, underneath the screen. Uh, there's just a few chips under uh, the battery I'll pull off in a second. But you'll notice the main processor uh, right in here, as well as the, um, I believe these have what? What was it, like a 32 megabyte buffer or something like that? Um, which is going to be this chip here. It's going to be the RAM. And you'll notice some extra parts, some uh, linear technology, probably for uh, power supply management. You'll notice um, this is probably the boot flash memory for the processor. And you'll notice some uh, global crystals. Uh, they're like 24 megahertz or so. Uh, text instruments chip right in here for probably power management, uh, PMIC. And so let's see if I can carefully lift 
Yep. I don't want to damage the tape. I want it to go back together. Okay. Pull the battery out. This guy's tiny. It, uh, 600 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts lithium ion. Nothing too fancy about that. And here we shall see some huge inductors, relatively huge <laughs> inductors for the uh, power supply there, right near the input. And a Phillips, a few Phillips chips in here. And um, this guy right in here is of particular note. I believe, yep, this is a, uh, what is it, Wolfson Micro, I believe is the brand. Um, they make, this is the audio DAC, the digital to analog converter, that um, is essentially driving, these are the two left and right channel filter output caps that go right into the headphone jack there, and they drive the um, the headphones. And so... The audio is uh, thanks to that little guy there. And let's see. This little uh, daughter board here, you have to be careful if you want to remove it. Um, you got to wiggle it back and forth very, very gingerly. It's a pain to do and it's very nerve-wracking. But once you, you, you can actually remove this um, headphone jack assembly if you have like a bad headphone jack or something like that and replace that pretty easily. Every time when you use a click wheel it makes a little clicking sound, that's the little speaker right in there. So that's pretty cool. And so let's just put that back on. There we go. And the hard drive I stuck in place with double sided tape. Yeah, you can actually um, pull this out and you wiggle it back and forth just slightly and the uh, zip, it's not a zip connector, the uh, Molex connector will just pop out there. And you can see all the little pins in there that connect to uh, like the 40 or 50 some pins on the compact flash card. This is actually thinner than, I use the original rubber boot, it's thinner than the original micro drive, though it's the same size otherwise. But, um, yeah, I had to put some double-sided tape in there. I put quite a bit, apparently. I don't want to rip this out. But, um, because it would rattle like crazy otherwise. Under the screen, there's not anything. And there's just a little Ziff connector holding the screen in there. But, um, that's pretty much it. That's my teardown. And so now I'm going to go in reverse and put everything back together. Um in true teardown tube fashion and show you that uh, I didn't break anything. <laughs> uh, make sure if you're doing this you tuck the battery wires in there. Uh, you don't want them catching on anything. Okay. Make sure the screen is clean. I always forget to do that and then I put it back together and there's like a hair right in the way. It's like my Worst pet peeve. Uh, I should be using a lint-free cloth to do it, but I just use my shirt. <laughs> Very professional. Now you want to slide these in. There is a little groove in there that uh, you slide the board behind. And you might feel some resistance when you get to where the click wheel is. Just wiggle it just slightly, very carefully up and down. And, um... There shouldn't be too much trouble. Uh, if there's too much resistance, you're going to want to remove it and try again until it goes in there. Okay, now I usually go with the screws. And an uh, interesting thing to know, well, First off, be careful when putting this screw, you don't want to drop the screw in there, which I always had a fear of. I've never done it myself, but I wouldn't put it past myself to do that. But, um, yeah, interesting thing to note about these older iPods, they have the four-pin remote jack. All that is is a serial port, which is um, a TX and an RX line, and then you have your 3.3-volt uh, supply, and then your um, your ground. So you can actually serially communicate with uh, this device. And um, 
Yeah, put that back in, and this is going to be slightly, I don't know, it shouldn't be too annoying. You get the bottom clips in first, and then you kind of pull these in slightly while pushing in. It's really awkward and annoying to do, usually, but uh, I had plenty of practice. And then once you get these seated, it'll click like that and kind of slide slightly left and right. And now when putting this in, uh, one of the corners doesn't have the clips. That's where the uh, click wheel connector is. And this guy is pretty easy to fit in. It just snaps in like that. I didn't. I forewent putting adhesive on that one part because it well it didn't really matter too much. But uh, the top. Definitely needed some adhesive, seeing as there's not really any clips. Uh, come on. Oh yeah, make sure your click wheel is in the same position, the right position as a physical, or not click wheel, the hold switch is in the same position as the switch underneath. And then you can sort of squeeze it in there. Unhold. And the screen's showing life, which is a good sign. And it should come up in about a couple seconds. Yep, there we go. Uh, interesting thing I found once I did the um, the compact flash mod. Uh, it shows that I have the full capacity, but it says I, I have 13.1 gigs available even though I have like 2,000 songs on here, which is not true. I've used up about half the memory anyway. So I don't know. That's probably a software issue, not a hardware issue. But other than that, it all works. And so that is my teardown of my second gen iPod mini, uh, predecessors to the iPod nanos. And so if you like this teardown, um, you know, just like, comment, subscribe, uh, yeah, and I'll keep bringing uh, different teardowns of uh, all the different objects that I have. I have plenty of electronic, uh, um, you know, equipment and stuff, so I have uh, a lot more to, to go, so I'll keep them coming. Um, I'm a little bit busy now with classes, but I'll figure something out. So anyway, I shall see you guys next time. So until then, bye.